Hey Gemini Seekers, welcome back to the Existential Shift. That was quick. Happy January 2021. Ace of Pentacles, Strength, and Five of Wands. Some things are worth fighting for. Some things don't really feel like a fight when you are so invested in them. Maybe there's something that is really, really great at the tip of your finger. And it requires a little bit adjustments, working on it, figuring it out. Some challenges, yes, but worth it that you feel like you can do it. Creative out of the box thinking is advised here. Listening to your instincts, to your intuition, there might be a way to figure this, resolve this, get through this easier, faster, if you just allow yourself to get creative with the solution. But all in all, it seems worth it. Ace of Pentacles, Strength, and Five of Wands. There's desire here. There's passion. There's faith in something bigger than you. And yet, Page of Swords, Eight of Swords. It's hard for you to believe that you believe. <laughs> You're so used to being entangled and the mind and the worry and the anxiety and how things can go wrong where suddenly this sensation of I think it's going to be okay even though reality is presenting some challenges yes and things aren't exactly yet clear I have this strong gut feeling and somehow my body is just tranquil and okay but then your mind is like you're not supposed to be calm look at XYZ the situation the circumstance the facts Seemingly, this is something that is supposed to be stressful to you and confusing to you. And yet, it's like you know you got this. Maybe it's something that you've dealt with before. Maybe it's something that you know you have some people or person or um, anything really that supports you. So it's similar to challenges you've had before, but not exactly. You're not alone in this, Gemini. This is something where, that you are used to being alone in, a circumstance that you're used to tackling yourself, which you know in the past brought in a lot of anxiety and worry. But today, now, it's like your spirit is more present. Other people are involved somehow, assisting in the situation. It's not as scary anymore. The uh, the monster that was under the bed is now sitting on it next to you, chatting and making you laugh. You know, it's a little bit like, and you're looking at it and you're like, you're the monster that was under my bed for all these years, you know, constantly scaring me and here and in there, and now now we're just hanging out and it's and it's cool and I you know I can handle this, I can deal with this. It's not that bad. The lion is now just a cute kitten. You saw its shadow, which was bigger and scarier. But then when you spoke to it, maybe when you spoke to yourself, your own fears, your own anxieties, your own demons, your own worries, you realized it's actually something I can handle, I have handled it. Maybe it's a person. Maybe it's an aspiration. Right away, there's a dissolvement of fear and a lot of sense of empowerment. Come on, this is great. Great. Show me more for Jimmy. 
for January. No, maybe just yes or no. Oh, King of Wands. And that's your certainty. That's your sense of leadership and passion. It's like you're feeling so much stronger in the world. It's like you have some reserves of energy suddenly popping out of nowhere that you didn't know you had. Fairly soon throughout the month, you realize that you got a handle on this, whatever this is, and you're proud of yourself. This King of Wands can be someone outside of you that is there for you and helping you through this. This might be the support system that you're not used to having that is coming up here. Show me more. The Emperor. Every time I see a King of Wands and then immediately the Emperor afterwards, there's a sense of strong maturity process. Very masculine, by the way, owning up to your life, to your wants, to your goals. It's setting a goal and reaching it. It's having a desire and manifesting it with actions and work and focus. And maybe it's a man in your life who's really, really stepping up. Gemini, if you're a masculine, this could be you stepping up. Two of Pentacles and this strong knowing of what you can do, who you are and where you belong, brings a sense of a dilemma. It brings up a question mark. Okay, so is this my environment then? Something about your essence grows and then there's a need to align your reality with it. Change scenery, change a home, change location, change a job, change an attitude, change your wardrobe. Maybe you need to dress up more like this sense, this, this stronger sense of self that you have now. It could be mundane and standard, it can be bigger. But adjustments need to be made. Three of Cups. It will be made with joy and fun. You will enjoy it. Have fun with it. Make it an adventure. You decided to take ownership of your body and of your physique and of your um, strength and your health. Great. Making adjustments with nutrition, with habits, with exercise. Making it to be fun. Signing up for a class that you would really, really enjoy. That gives you both of the two worlds. It aligns you with your newfound purpose. But you also get a sense of adventure and joy out of it. Maybe meeting new people. Making new connections. So far so good, Jummy. Show me more, please. Ten of Cups, and it fell right on the Emperor. So there is some strong love connection here. A partnership, a commitment, um, a deep friendship, or a family bond. This could be with a father figure. Okay. Um, this could be some sort of family celebration. There might be a new addition to the family, a birth of a baby, or you know, visit from a relative. But there is some sort of sense of, again, celebration, celebrating one another. There is so much goodness on the table. Wow. Gemini, thank you. Thank you for letting me tap into this energy. It's fun. Show me more, please. For Gemini. A little bit more for Gemini. For Gemini. Okay. There it is. 
Five of Swords. Uh, don't let the monster of self-sabotage raise its head. When things are really, really good, that's when you get bored. <laughs> and adventurous. <laughs> and thinking, well, what if there could be something better right now? Take a breath. If things look really, really good this month, let them remain as a status quo and try not to challenge them. Of course, if things are not good, then break out of them. But if things are really aligning with everything that I'm seeing here and feel good, don't try, you know, let, let laying dogs lie. Let sleeping dogs sleep. Like, don't tease, don't test. If things are really looking really good with someone you're uh, dating or dealing with, um, or in a partnership with Don't try to poke the bear Like don't don't test them to see how much they how much they love you or how much they can Oh, you're great now, but if I become this and that will you still be great? Jenny Of course they won't still be great because you got to be great for them to be great to you It's not at all costs. You can't do whatever you want and expect them to stick around if you test them like that in my view if they'll stick around while you being an ass, then they fail. They fail for themselves and they fail for enabling you. Okay? They're not supposed to stay no matter what you do. It goes the other way around, you know. If you start acting out, then they would be like, okay, I can't stay when they act like that. Does that make sense? Um, a strong advice that is coming up from the cards is remember a sense of appreciation and gratitude for what we have. It doesn't mean you shouldn't aspire and set another goal, of course not, but don't do it to spite or to test. Do it because it's something that generally comes from the gut, from the heart, and it's because you're ready for the next level. And do it in a, in a productive way, as opposed to, once again, poking a bear that is like hugging you. <laughs> like, what are, what are you doing? You know, sorry if that felt a little harsh, but I feel like I just spared some of you a lot of uh, regret. Regret later on. Um, come back to this reading because this is coming up more so towards the last third of the month of January. So come back in the middle of January or la or the end to. And I re I recommend doing that, doing so with all of my readings, by the way, because in retrospect they get such deeper levels and layers of understanding and connectivity and resonance. So it's nice. Anyway, careful of self-sabotage. And if you're dealing with someone who's tempted to be self-sabotaging, don't play along. Be like, hey, things have been really, really good. Are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you want to play this game? And if someone is, is placing you in the corner and be like, Jemmy, are you sure you want to play this game? Things have been so, so great. Are you sure you want to do this? And take a breath and be like, you know what, I'm sorry. Again, this is assuming that things are wonderful and this person is as supportive and lovely as it seems. If you're not dealing with anyone romantically, this could be your environment. This could be your friend. This could be your supportive family member. Appreciation. Okay. So too many cards. I'll just take the top one because the Ace of Swords was also in the bottom of the deck before I started shuffling. So it wants to be here. So Ace of Swords. Great. So from Five of Swords to Ace of Swords, that's very fast learning. That's something being cut out of its root really, really quickly and not given the opportunity to grow um, in a way that it would be harder to deal with. It's like recognizing a tendency, recognizing um, a behavior pattern, and before it, it rears its head, kind of being like, nope. It's almost like setting yourself straight. Or someone is straight, setting, setting you straight, or vice versa. But it becomes clear very, very fast. You might have some sort of an idea um, coming up inspiration of some sort coming up this month go with it 
don't overthink it. If it's something um, that you want to try and do and pursue, write the thing, say the thing, you know, again, as long as it's benefic and productive because negativity is going to really bite you in the ass this month. You know what you're talking about. You always do. You're very, very smart. But if you feel like that post or that status or that picture will really, really trigger someone or something or someone's and just take a moment and sit with yourself and ask, is it truly necessary right now? Or, or am I just trying to poke the bear, right? And kind of test my environment to see how much they love me. Just be honest with yourself. You'll, you'll spare yourself and your environment a lot of, um, you'll spare yourself. Let's just, let's just put it at that. Anything else for Jenny, for January? Ace of Wands, we now have three aces on the table. That's amazing. This is a whole new world opening up for you, Gemini. And the fact that the Ace of Pentacles was the first to come out, it's it's based on something very, very uh, long la that can be long lasting, that has longevity to it. It's also based on inspiration and passion I see you towards the end of the month initiating or doing something very new and very exciting and having a new start that is very meaningful on several layers several levels it's like it's like a leap in frequency in some way it's 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 an expansion type of uh, new start it's like Starting something new that is very different than what you're used to. Okay, too many. I'll just... Ten of Swords and the Ace of Cups. So we now have all Aces on the table. Okay, you're putting to rest, finally, something that... This is also putting to rest a love that hurt you for a long time. Those of you who have been carrying... Uh, a sense of um, devotion to someone for a very very long time you seem to be burying it this month it's the end of it and that's probably what allows four aces in a reading is insane it's very rare and it's it, it means a lot this is the the code this is you you crack the code Gemini you crack your spiritual and energetic code for a major leap in frequency this is huge this is a change of lifestyle on a very deep level. I'm just gonna look at them, but I'm not gonna take them because it's too much. So I'm gonna show you the cards that also fell. It's the Hermit, Six of Cups, the Empress, and Judgment. Some of you are uh, relieving some sense of something from childhood that has been glued to you for a very long time. It's either a perception of a self, could be something that was imposed by you by a mother figure or a parent or even a grandparent. Um, yeah, strong sense of awakening out of it. You're like breaking some sort of like, um, an imprisoning hug like almost like a, an overbearing controlling love like maybe it could be a parental figure that was suffocating you with so-called love but more so the need to control there was something very um, um what's the word abrasive about it but that type of energy is being put to rest. It's the same type of energy that had you be stuck on this type, on this love for a very long time that wasn't serving you or is no longer, whatever this is, you're saying a final goodbye to it this month, which I'm not surprised. These are very karmic times. We're starting a complete new cycle of frequency and energy. We're moving into a brand new age of air. You know, Saturn and Jupiter now that have moved to Aquarius in February, the end of January, February, everything moves to Aquarius. We're going to have Venus in Aquarius, if I'm not mistaken, the sun obviously in Aquarius. There's going to be a lot of focus on the air energy, which is very much freedom 
like out of the earth, out of what we were invested in for a very long cycle, and just change. And I also have two, four aces and two tens. Uh, you, you gotta look at this. Let's move this. One, two, three, four, and then two tens. Major cycle completed to make room for something very, very big. Four aces. You have your D element. Here, here's the thing, and I speak about it um, more in depth on my introduce, introduction to uh, tarot, introducing tarot on my tarot masterclass bunkai, which is the first class, number zero. And then the aces come afterwards, the classes of the aces. So I speak over there quite intensely on earth element, air, fire, water, being the four elements that form life, right? And the aces are both the essence of each of these elements and the initiation, the start, right? So this is like, you know, when you have a lock of like four numbers and, and, and pressing the exact numbers that unlock the, the, the gate or the door. And it, it, you could have only reached this, you know, code by setting to rest, finalizing something, a certain battle, a certain um, mind cycle, something that you've been cycling a long time in your head, conversation with someone, ideas of something, a theoretical um, sense of righteous indignation of some sort, where this is how it should be, or this is the person I need, I should be with, or this is the thing I should be doing, or whatever, you know, something that has been, and it, it's been a struggle, something that you're guided to defeat, and yet this month, as you connect to yourself, to your true self of the now, not of the past, but of the now, your true want that is connected to your spirit, that is connected to the universal consciousness, that consciousness that is aligned with truth, with your truth, Gemini. And you realize that this no longer is, it's no longer, you know, maybe the players are still playing, but you're no longer on that chessboard. You've already checkmated, right? It's like someone who already won, already did a checkmate, won or lost, doesn't matter. Someone did a checkmate. But whether you won, won or lost, you're still sitting next to the board, like staring at the maneuvers, figuring what you could have done differently or what they could have done differently. Does it matter? And then there's a strong sense of maturity and understanding that, no, it doesn't. A whole new world of potential joy is out there, right? And then like in everything in life, in every change, in every evolution, there's three, five steps backwards for then a massive jump. Once this happens, once this energy clicks in, Ace of Swords, one, once Aquarius season, uh, January 20th, once the sun moves into Aquarius, or possibly when Venus moves into Aquarius, I'm not sure when that is, I think Venus is now in Capricorn. I don't know when she moves into Aqua, but don't wait for that. As soon as, you know, most of the energy moves into Aquarius, mid-month towards end of month, that's when you're like, you're on a whole different boat. I'm just, I'm stunned a little bit from this reading. I'm just staring at it uh, for a little bit to see if anything else comes out. But, okay, I'm gonna do your um, your spiritual shamanic homework for this month. Then I'm gonna pull you an oracle. Um, and afterwards, there, I'm, I'm going to continue this reading as an extended that will focus on your love life. We're going to look into this energy of like Ace of Cups, this King of Wands, strength type of energy let's see who these people are let's see the dynamic between you and your person of interest bottom line that's what i'm trying to say um and we will finish up with runes as well after doing a very big tarot spread okay 
So link to that you can find below in the description box. You can find your specific extended on Vimeo or all extendeds for unlimited streaming on Patreon on top of other VIP content. If you want to check it out, I would love for you to join Patreon. Um, okay. Keep looking at it. That's amazing. Now, what do I mean by in case you're new to this? So I'm, I've started doing this recently and I love it. These are just 22 major arcanas from my big Rider weight deck for lectures. So I pulled only the 22 major arcanas and I'm going to ask for spiritual guidance. What kind of energy can my Gemini seekers harness and work through to assist the collective at this time as shamanic work to help the collective? and simultaneously allow you to learn an aspect of your human condition, because the tarot are basically the human condition, right? So, what do my Geminis, what can my spiritual light and shadow workers, Geminis, do energetically this month of January to assist the collective? Great. The Wheel of Fortune. Lovely. Okay, this is meaningful and it kind of aligns with these extreme changes that you're going through. It's another 10. Um, we do have all the fixed signs here. And we do have them here as well. We have, we've spoken a little bit of Aquarius season and we do have Leo a little bit. There's Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio, and Taurus around. So something with the seasons and producing something, okay? The fixed signs are producers. They create big, big things. So if you're a Tarot Masterclass Bunkai student of mine, you have it. Simply click the link that I will put below and watch the class and harness the energetic aspect and lesson of it for the month of January. Okay, this is not part of the reading. This is not a premonition or a forecast. I teach the underlined spiritual aspects of all the cards in my classes. So that's the aspect that I ask for you to focus on when it comes to doing shamanic work for the collective, okay? If you're not one of my students, my classes are built in a way of a library. So you can have, you know, you can rent or purchase each class separately. So you don't have to have the entire course unless you want to. But you can simply rent this one, the Wheel of Fortune, and join our work. And let me know if you did in the comments, okay? Great. Now, which oracle should I pull for you guys? The I Ching, Animal Spirit, Enchanted Map, or Akashic Tarot for Gemini's for January? It's popping up. Mm, I'm feeling the I Ching. I Ching for my Geminis, my beautiful Gemini Seekers for the month of January. What do my Geminis need to know? And this is part of the reading. This is for you specifically. Number 40, hexagram 40. Let's read. Okay. Hesia deliverance. Above thunder, below water. Thunder above water, the rains come at last. Ooh. The thunderstorm clears the air and refreshes the earth. So it is when troubled times end and deliverance is at hand. Release from pressure allows a return to everyday life with a renewed sense of gratitude. Attend to necessary affairs with all possible speed as good fortune approaches. Wow, that sounds awesome. I mean, <laughs> this is big, Gemini. I don't know what kind of a new start you're embarking on. Um, some of you are completely reinventing yourself. And it's very exciting. 
I'm very excited. I feel excited just looking at it. So that's awesome. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Sorry I'm late. I just, you know, I have a life to attend to sometimes. <laughs> it happens. Uh, <laughs> if you're new to my channel, my name is Morgan. Uh, subscribe, press the bell button to receive notifications. My sweater is huge. Press the bell button to receive not notifications. Comment your thoughts. You can now join the Existential Shift as a channel member for $1.99 as a monthly membership. It's simply reciprocation for what I do here. It will give you a badge in lives. You will stand out in lives. Or you can just, you know, reciprocate the energy. If you want to give more and receive extra content, so that would be Patreon. Uh, if you want to book a private reading, you need to join Patreon. Um, I think that's it, guys. Stay magic. Stay true. I love you. I'll see you soon.